वेलकम टू इंग्लिश लेसन विद डॉक्टर विनम्रता टूडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ द पोएम्स टाइटल्ड द क्वेस्ट फ्रॉम सॉन्ग्स ऑफ राधा रिटन बाय सरोजनी नायडू एज वी ऑल नो दैट सरोजनी नायडू वॉज वन ऑफ ग्रेटेस्ट लिरिकल पोएट्स एंड एडवोकेट फॉर वेमेंस इमेंसिपेशन अ फ्रीडम फाइटर and a woman of so much caliber her beautiful lyrical vent was so soothing to ears that because of her lyrical verses she was termed or given the title of nightingale of india or bharat kokila and she was born on 13th of february 1879 and died on 2nd of march 1949 she is one of the finest poet with indianness reflected at its core in her verses her poems are melodic lyrical rhythmic in nature and deals with themes like indian landscape indian myths mysticism nature themes of death and love love of spirituality love or quest for spirituality love between radha and krishna so you see in this poem also uh, she has written many poems on songs of radha and one of the poems among them the quest we are going to do today in this poem also similar themes of uh, love between the divine and the human the love of krishna is reflected her uh, most important works are the golden threshold published in 1905 The Bird of Time, published in nineteen hundred and twelve. The Bird and King, published in nineteen hundred and seventeen. And this particular poem that we are going to talk about today, the quest, it is taken from her anthology, The Feather of Dawn, which was published posthumously by her daughter Padmaja Naidu. This poem is a divine love song where Indian spiritual views and faith that God dwells in the inner conscious of. one's own self he is inside us is well evident it starts with the frantic search that the poet is searching for her lover krishna and who is krishna krishna is not just uh, the krishna as uh, we all know uh, from gokul but krishna is uh, the symbolic uh, inspiration of any god he is the divine lover and the quest for krishna she goes on searching for him 24/7 from dawn to dusk she is in constant quest for the love of for the love of supreme being and then suddenly the voice of god is heard from within her own self and it shakes her to the very core of her heart because the love which was she was seeking outside Uh, the krishna who she was seeking outside is not present outside but the answer is coming from within her soul within her body within her core and answering the fact that the god is present within her own self and uh, it is futile to seek his love outside when he dwells in each and every individuals in her core so that is the basic gist or theme of the poetry and let's start without any ado with the line by line analysis of the poetry so here is the poem in front of us the quest and uh, as uh, we talk about the word quest we all know quest is uh, to seek out something to search out something but it's not just simple search of any thing which is lost but it is the search which is very close to heart the search for which you are ready to devote your life the quest of your life the ultimate finding which one can have in their life so quest is something much deeper full of desire full of the um, passion with which one searches for something so here the passion with which sarojini naidu the speaker of the poem is searching for something is nobody else but kanhaiya she feels that the kanhaiya or the god has gone somewhere he has actually ditched her or he has actually left her and she is desperately trying to find him out to seek his love but uh, she asks everyone she searches all around and is unable to find him unless and until there is a voice which comes 
uh, it is maybe the voice of krishna himself who rebukes her saying that why are you so desperate finding me everywhere here and there out in the outer world outside your heart when everyone knows that the residence of god is inside each and every individual you can also say that this is something uh, of the philosophy of gita also or uh, this is the philosophy of indian scriptures also that god is universal god is omnipotent omniscient and omnipresent so when god is omnipotent omnipresent and omniscient of course he is present in the heart of every individual he is present in every soul and he is inside your heart you have to do nothing but seek deep down in your spiritual being in the deepest roots of your individuality and god is there kanhaiya is there ghansham is there so uh, without much ado let's start with line by line analysis of the poetry and as you can see the poem is of 20 lines all together and two two lines are clubbed together so we can say that there are 10 couplets all together and all these couplets are rhyming you can see dawn gone glade shade tides bites and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 couplets are all together so we can say that the poem is written uh, in uh, rhyming couplets of uh, 20 lines all together and 10 rhyming couplets they are and so the rhyme scheme is a b b c c d d and so on now coming to the line by line poem my foolish love went seeking thee at dawn so at the very morning just as she wakes up she goes in search in quest for the foolish love for kanhaiya and crying oh wind where is kanhaiya gone so she is asking the wind she is asking everyone around where kanhaiya has forlorn her and gone so first of all she asks the wind wind can you tell me where kanhaiya is gone now you see wind is uh of course not going to answer wind is an inanimate object wind is uh, a natural force so you can see that it is a kind of personification or the larger aspect in which natural forces are seen around us by sarojini naidu so that's why she is so that's why she is referring to the wind as if the wind can answer oh wind tell me where kanhaiya is gone so the wind is being personified here so in the very morning she asked the wind then in the noon time in the day i questioned at noon rise the forest glade so she is asking the forest she is asking the flowers and the shade friendly shade of the forest around rests my sweet lover in thy friendly shade question mark so she asks the forest whether kanhaiya whether ghanshyam is resting in the shade of the forest trees because you see kanhaiya has always been very close to nature and all the ras leelas have been done in the gardens and spiritual essences in the forests and jungles so that's why everywhere where there is the possibility of kanhaiya being there she searches out for him again the forest cannot reply it is an inanimate object so forest is being personified here at dusk i pleaded with the dove great tides o oh, tell me where my flute player abides now you see in the morning she was asking the wind in the afternoon also she is searching for kanhaiya and asking the forests and at dusk she is asking the water the dove colored waters the darkish waters if it is yamuna if we considered that uh, she is at the banks of yamuna river where krishna was having his all the leelas so at uh, uh, it is the dusky color of the yamuna river with which whom she is asking the tides of the yamuna river she is asking if she can if the river can tell where so where the flute player has gone but nobody replies dumb were the waters dumb the woods the wind they knew not where my play fellow to find 
I bowed my weeping face upon my palm, moaning, O oh, where art thou, my Ghanshyam gone? Thou, again, the old form of English she is using here, and she is asking Ghanshyam, weeping, bowing her face down on the palms, moaning for the grief of Ghanshyam, moaning for the grief of gone Krishna, asking, where have you gone? Why have you left me? Why have you uh, rejected me? in such a way that I am searching all around, asking everyone and I am getting no answers. Then suddenly, like a boat that rocks from kneel to rafter, from the very bottom to the top, as if she has been rocking, the heart was shaken, my heart was shaken by thy hidden laughter. So that laughter, the hidden laughter which is coming is of the God and it is hidden laughter and it is coming from her heart. So, that mocking is coming from inside her. Kanaya is nowhere other than in the heart of the individual. That's why the heart is shaken by the hidden laughter coming from within her. Then didst thou mock me with thy tender malice. And Kanaya starts mocking her. Kanaya starts teasing her. Mocking, we all know it's teasing. And rebuking her in the way that like nectar bubbling from my own heart's chalice, as if my heart was a cup of wine or something and from it the bubbles were coming up, forming up nectar bubbles and uh, so the mocking is coming from the heart as if something is brewing inside my heart itself and bubbling, this nectar was bubbling in my own heart, my own a cup of heart from where this is coming so the heart is here a metaphor for uh, you can say cup in which the nectar has been poured the bubbling nectar and uh, thou saidest O faithless one self slain with doubt why seekest thou my loveliness without and ask the wind or wave or flowering dell the secret that within thyself thought dwell. The secret is hidden inside you. You are asking the flowery garden, you are asking the waves, you are asking the wind. All are inanimate objects. So we can say that all have been personified here. And uh, did they answer? No, they are not going to answer because God is inside your heart. You have to seek the answer. You have to look in your soul, into your soul, into your heart and your heart is nothing but a cup which is containing the essence of God himself, which is containing the nectar, the bubbling uh, spirit of uh, uh, supreme being in your uh, body. So if you have to seek God, you have to seek within your mind and within your soul. I am of thee and thou of me apart. Look for me in the mirror of thy heart. So if you have to look for me, you have to just look into the mirror of your heart. You have to just look into your own reflection. And I am no one, nowhere else but inside your own soul. So this is the very essence of Indian spirituality. Uh, talking about God being present everywhere inside each and every individual. So in two liners, if you have to sum this whole poem, you can say that Kasturi kundali basa mrig dhunde van mahi. Aise ghati ghati ram hai dunia dekhe nahi. If you have to uh, define this poem, these are the very two apt words, very two apt, uh, these two lines are the most apt couplet which one can talk about here. That uh, just like the uh, deer, who uh, the musk deer who has got the musk and who is driven mad by the scent of the musk trying to find out where the musk is he keeps on searching throughout the garden he keeps on searching throughout the forest trying to find the musk not knowing the fact that musk is nowhere else but in his own navel in the same way we keep on searching for god everywhere unknowing of the fact or unaccepting this fact that God is nowhere but inside us all. So only we have to do what we have to do is to dig deeper inside our own heart, inside our own soul and he will be there. So there should be no doubt while seeking him. If you are doubtlessly seeking God, of course 
you are going to find him which sarojini naidu ultimately realizes in this poetry at the end and that's why the quest is over the quest for the search of god the quest for the love of kanhaiya is ultimately achieved when she realizes that nectar the essence of kanhaiya is in the cup of her own heart the cup of her own heart is the metaphor for the cup is the metaphor for her heart which is containing the nectar of the supreme being so that is all about this poetry the quest from songs of radha by sarojini naidu i'm sure you all have must understood what is the essence of this poetry and if you have enjoyed this poem please don't forget to like share subscribe and comment thank you